Ladies and gentlemen and all variations thereupon, I'm Bridget Mitchell and welcome to my YouTube channel. So I've got a friend of work who's recently moved. Now, when I moved, she got me a house plant and a lovely card. So really I should do something similar in return. And what I was planning on doing was not going out. Well, I have got a card, but I'm not going to just go out and buy her a house plant because I'm the sort of person that tries to destroy capitalism by taking back the means of production and you know, I just like crafting things. So basically I want to take this giant bowl of wool and I'm going to try and create a cushion and that's going to be today's project. Hand knitting a cushion. Now as it happens this project is fairly easy. Enough, uh, where I've got the pattern from, from uh, I, a tutorial on YouTube, I'll link in the description my source for the pattern down below and basically by the looks of it this is going to be a simple thing that I can just do in one recording session. Probably not going to get it in one shot because I'll stumble over my words long before I finish this but um, I'm just going to give it a go. First time I've tried it, I'm going to do it on the camera. Okay, so we're going to take a tail end at the end about 30 centimetres I suggest and then after that a short section 30 centimetres about 12 inches by the way and I'm going to cross that to make a loop so we've got a little circle reach through the circle on the other side and just take a hold of the bit that's attached to the actual board of wool pull through to make a stitch Give me a bit of the tops of tight. Okay, so I can comfortably fit my hand through that stitch, reach through and grab the next section, and pull. It's probably a bit too much. Yeah, and then I'll just do the same again. Reach through, and grab a section. I'm going to do that for 10 loops. So I've brought the camera in closer so you've got a better look of that one I'm doing. And of course the tripod's right between my legs now so I apologise if I keep the tripod. I'm going to try and minimise my cutting in this. So we've got our first braid. And all I've done other than move you closer is I've unwound a lot of the wool. Because with the big heavy wool ball at the end it can get a little bit of a pain constantly trying to tug it and unwind it. So once you've got your 10 braids, the first thing you want to do is take your, not your last one, your first braid, because we want it to be a circular cushion, take your first braid, a little loop like that, next to the uh, tail you originally started with, but not actually the tail, reach through and grab the active wall, that's the wall that you closest to the ball that you've been working on. So you grab that, pull through. Simple as that. Now you do your next one. It also helps if you try and keep the loops about the same size. I have a tendency to try and too hard and make big loops so try not to do what I do. <laughs> My nan used to uh, knit really loose when I was a baby she made me a shawl 
that she knitted that loose that wouldn't be washed it. It uh, stopped being a shawl and started being a blanket. And I used it right up until I was probably about 12 years old because the more we washed it, the bigger it grew because she used to knit that loose. So whenever I was sick, home, homesick from school, we would have, I would have this blanket that used to be my baby shawl. It was just constantly growing. So there we are, I've gone round another time. You can tell I've gone round, round all the way because there's my tail bit. And I'm gonna keep the tail looped in the middle. So it's out the way, but you wanna keep mind of it because that's gonna be your indicator of where your, um, that's gonna be your indicator of where you're starting and finishing. So we're gonna keep that in the middle and then we've gone round once, because we want it to be a circular cushion, we're going to fold. And I'm going to try and work it so it's the right way round to you. <laughs> it's not necessarily me. But uh, I'm going to reach the hand into this first loop. From, see, the uh, tail comes through there. So this is the first loop. I'm going to reach through with it folded over. I'm going to grab the active wall and pull through and make a loop. And do that for all of these loops. And the reason I'm folding it over is because if I kept on doing it on the circle like I was doing originally, it's going to keep growing larger and larger and larger with the loops on the outside so it's never going to come in to make a circle if you fold it over you can keep your knitting closer together tighter not like my nan's knitting my mum on the other hand when she knits she knits incredibly tight she made me a doctor who scarf once and she was knitting that tight and put that much wool on it she was bending the knitting needles from the weight of the wool alone. So there's the tail, so I know I'm coming towards the end. Reach through, grab, let me just make sure I've dropped it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Very difficult doing it this way around. Uh, it's nine, and I think that's ten. We'll see once it's done if I've actually just uh, messed that up or not. I'm gonna make sure my towel's through there. So. There's the tail. This is the first loop. So this is the next one. So that's the, yeah, that's the last one I've done. So this is the first next loop. So fold it over. Right, I'll do it this way. I'm losing track doing it the opposite way. Hopefully. Turning it sideways slightly. It's easier for you to follow and me to do at the same time. So anyway, how is everyone? Are you all okay? Hope the weather brightens. Good weather for ducks at least, isn't it? Typical British summer, yes.
good thing about this technique the good thing about this technique is that it's very easy to undo if you've ever tried knitting with needles you can find that it's very very hard to undo if you've missed dropped a stitch or something and you wanted to go back that's very hard to do See cushions down the weight of the wall with this if you wanted to start again you could just unravel everything See, this is where the uh, tail is, so I know that this is going to be the first stitch in the loop. And that's the last one that I just did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and let's see how many rows we've done. Two more times because I wanted to go around six times. Right, so where's the tail? Right there, so that's the first stitch. Reach through and grab the active one. As you can see, as I'm, well, you might not be able to see. Ugh. As I'm knitting around and getting closer and closer in, so because I'm folding, these uh, loops are getting closer and closer together. Whereas if I would have kept it flat, they would um, be spreading out. And which one was I up to? That was the last one I did. So it's this one. This would be a lot easier if I wanted to. That was my mouse. Don't have a very wide server as you can see, so if I have my mouse on it. Very liable to fall off when I've got wool on there as well. And that's it, I think. 
So we count the rows. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. If I've miscounted, do let me know in the comments. <laughs> sure you would. <laughs> okay. So I've moved to a more overhead view. Hopefully this will be a bit easier to see with. So I've done all the stitching going down. So now we've just got to seal it up. To do that, you grab your tail and you go in from the inside. So pull through a stitch and then grab your next stitch on the inside, pull through. And as you can see, as you do that, it pulls tighter. So again, take your tail, put it from the inside under one of the stitches and pull through and it goes tighter. creating a sort of wall bum hole. <laughs> make myself laugh. And then take your tail, press it on the inside, and try your best to separate out the wall. Then take the tail again, or one half of the tail, loop it under one of the inside nuts, on the inside, um, do you call them loops? I suppose it would be. But tuck it under and then just tie it off. So, a mathematical way of tying and a shoelace knot, you take your braids like this so they naturally fall that side, and you just arch them so they're opposite sides, then you just grab and pull. And you've got little knots. I do that for my shoelaces every day. And that can just stay inside there as part of the filling for the actual cushion. Speaking of filling, I just was the uh, recording a bit while I went to get it because I'm not so organised that I keep my materials to hand at all times, which would be more professional of me. So I'm just going to use these cotton sheets as a filling. They're soft and bulky and cheap. And because they're cotton or a natural material, they're not plastic, they're not going to... Sorry, it's my phone baby. <laughs> not plastic, they're not going to uh, linger around and choke it off. So I'm going to tear off the wall, which can be rather hard. Because wall fibre is rather strong, so you might want to do it in small sections. Or keep fabric shears close at hand when you're actually doing this. I could go get some. I do have fabric shears. But I have to pause the recording again and I'm trying to get this. My aim here is to try and get this so you can see the whole thing to so show you how quick it is to make. But I'm failing miserably it seems. <laughs> okay, so there's my tail the, that was the active um, bit of wool and I've just torn off the end. It's can I make you go any higher? So there we are. So there's the um, last bit, and that was the last stitch I did. So let's get what would have been the next loop that I was going to use and pull it through. Put it inside. 
doing on the next one. can see the pattern here, just going all the way around, grabbing the outside loops and pulling what was the active tail through. with the, I think I've done one too many stitches there, haven't I? Yes, I have. One too many, so if you make a mistake, just pull it back in. Great. So, the first attempt at hand knitting. So there you have it, a uh, hand knitted cushion. Is it great? Eh, uh, it's okay. I might have another go of it before I give it to my friend. Um, I might keep this one for myself. But I wanted to show you my first attempt at it because it's, hand knitting is a fairly easy thing, as I've just discovered. Uh, it's very forgiving. If you get something wrong, you can undo it. Difficulty rating for this, you know, probably one or two. It's a very easy project, something you could do with children. It's not very time consuming, as you've just watched me do the whole thing. The only small cuts of me from reaching for things or moving the camera to give you a better angle. 
hopefully a better angle. So this is a quick, easy project. If you want a cushion, get yourself some more. That bowl of wool I had to begin with. I'm not going to use half of it, I think I'm going to use about a third of it. And as for the stuffing, it is about 100 grams, just over that, of cotton. So it's a 200 gram bag and I've used just over half of it. And you could always put a little bit less stuff in it or a little bit more if you wanted. That's a hand sewn cushion. A bit of practice, I could probably get that to look better. Uh, try and keep your loops the same size. That's a, a takeaway message from me. If you're trying this yourself, try and keep the loops the same size and don't drop stitches like I always do. <laughs> Though I only did it right at the end. So, um, till next time, I need to find a good way of signing off. I work, I have a colleague. A friend really, who's see so I have a friend at work. Not the Hulk, I'm not quite that cool. But no. I should make well on you. Subscribe for me to make the legendary hammer of the Norse god. <laughs> anyway, I've got a friend from work and uh,